Okay, so now we're going to talk about what's called statistical discrimination. Discrimination. And the issue of statistical discrimination goes something like this. There is some difficult to observe trait or hidden trait, hidden information we sometimes call it, that people believe is correlated with some easy to observe trait. Two things are correlated when they tend to go together, but they don't always do so. And people are going to use the easy to observe trait to try and make guesses about the difficult to observe trait. So, a classic example that I uh, often used to use is that, well, while very few men are child molesters, a much higher proportion of child molesters are men. So we know that being a man is correlated with being a child molester. So, you know, if you were out there looking for a babysitter, then you would potentially take that into account. And you would sort of go, okay, a 30-year-old woman wants to, you know, be a babysitter. That doesn't seem strange to me. A 30-year-old man wants to be a babysitter. Maybe that seems a little bit strange to me. And maybe as a parent, I'm a little bit, you know, worried about that. Um, so in that case, the correlation is real. We have pretty reliable statistics on that. In other situations, the correlation might be imagined. So people might believe that, um, you know, fat people are lazy or something like that. Um, and, you know, so what's going to happen here when we have statistical discrimination is that to some degree, if information is easy to find out, if it's relatively easy to observe these hidden traits, say with a criminal background check or something like that, then people are going to invest in acquiring that information and they won't need to engage in the discrimination. On the other hand, if it's difficult to observe the information, if it really is difficult, then people aren't going to invest in acquiring that information and they will have an incentive to engage in this statistical discrimination. So what we're going to see is that a profit-maximizing firm will have an incentive and will benefit from engaging in statistical discrimination if their beliefs are true, and they will be hurt by engaging in statistical discrimination based upon beliefs that are untrue. So, you know, this is kind of unfair, uh, many of us would argue, I think. You know, even if it's true, the fact that it's efficient to engage in statistical discrimination may not be okay with us. We may say it's just wrong to judge people based on population averages rather than on their own individual merits. Um, but I think our moral intuitions actually are a little bit divided. You know, in my earlier example of the 30-year-old man who wants to be a babysitter, I think maybe many people who are parents would say, yes, maybe in principle I should not discriminate against a man who wants to be a babysitter or a nanny or something like that, but the risks are just too high. Um, you see this kind of debate when we look at things like airport security and screening and so on and so forth. You know, who should be screened versus who shouldn't be screened. And yes, you know, 
we think that the probability that an 85-year-old woman is likely to cause uh, a security problem on an airline is pretty low compared to, say, a young male. Does that mean that we should change our screening procedures to take account of that or not? Should we go with a moral principle that no, everyone should be exposed to the exact same probability of being screened or something like that? So I think this is an area where our moral intuitions, we have moral intuitions on this, but our moral intuitions are somewhat mixed. So, but just to keep on coming back to the economics of it, profit maximizing firms will have an incentive to engage in statistical discrimination for correlations that are true, and will have a disincentive and will be hurt by engaging in statistical discrimination that's untrue.